Today we will design your first Docs42 document. My name is Lisa Bulsinger and I'm Business Technology Evangelist at Docs42. The video is structured in more sections. After watching this video, you will be able to design complete Docs42 templates. You will be able to set up your data map connections, insert data fields, work with types like inserting pictures, word documents. You can um, work with repeated sections, conditions, input parameter, and much more. So much content in this tutorial video. Let's get started. A SharePoint list serves as a starting point for many structured documents. In our example, it is a list of employees in which the employees' names, email addresses, the degrees of personal achievement of objectives, their photos, and more are stored. Based on these records, we will now create our first Docs42 document. Let's assume your marketing department has already provided you with a simple Word document containing your corporate identity and logo. Of course, you could start from scratch with a newly created Word document. The procedure is the same. To create a Docs42 template, we first create a data map. You will find all necessary tools in the Docs42 tab in the menu bar. To create this data map, click on Data Map. Now the dialog box opens in which you can configure your data sources. Here you can, for example, connect databases, data sources, Excel, XML, or SharePoint data. The first step is to save the data map. For best practice, we recommend that you store the data map in the directory of the document so that you can dynamically change the path to it. If you later move the folder, for example, by switching from a test to a production environment, you can continue to use your Docs42 template without further adjustments. In our example, we want to access data from a SharePoint list, so we add a new SharePoint data source. In this window, you can now connect to your SharePoint. You have different possibilities to establish your connection and specify the SharePoint URL. You can enter your data yourself. Enter your encrypted username and password with the help of our crypto data source. Authenticate with Azure Active Directory or dynamically read out your data using config files for example in Excel or XML format. Let's go with the variant in which we enter our connection data ourselves first. Later in the video, we will also create a data source where we establish a connection with the help of a config file and generate an encrypted username and password by means of the Docs42 crypto data source. Now click on username and password and enter your data. If you're using your SharePoint online, please check SharePoint Online. For the on-premise variant, simply leave the box empty. Then click on OK and on Connect. You can already select the desired SharePoint list in the drop-down menu. In our example, it is the employee list. Before saving, you can test whether you have included the correct data. In the dialog box that opens, Docs42 displays the data that is stored in SharePoint in the employee list. In order to list it in an ordered way, simply close the current window and click on Query. Click on Data Field and select your data field. In our case, Achievement. Select Use Sorting and in our case, Descending and click on OK. If you click on Test again, your data will be shown in an ordered way. This data is now correct. And by clicking on OK, you have connected your first data source. Now you can already insert data fields. To do this, close the data map dialog box. Now click on Insert Data Field in the Docs42 menu bar. This opens the Docs42 Data Field Explorer on your right side, where all previously created data sources are stored. The logo in front of the data source always indicates which data source it is, in our case SharePoint, and by clicking on the small arrow next to it, the data source opens and you can see all available data fields. For example, title and email address. To insert all the data fields into the document, move the cursor to the desired position in the document and double click on the data field in the data field explorer. This is also possible using the drag and drop functionality. The formatting is done with the usual Microsoft Office functions. 
If you want to display data in a special format, you can work with the type function in the Explorer data field. This allows you to, for example, insert certain number and date formats, Word, PDF, PowerPoint documents, QR codes, or images, for example. To insert an image, select the type image for the corresponding data field. Specify the path to it and optionally the dimension, which would be 120. After clicking on OK, insert the data field as usual using the drag and drop or by double click. To generate a dynamic QR code, proceed in a similar way. You select the data field, in our case the email address, select the desired barcode type and dimension, which would be 30, and insert the data field into the document. We have now inserted all required data fields and can generate our first Docs42 document. Just click on Generate in the Docs42 menu. You will receive your first Docs42 document. In the next step, we will expand this scenario. In order to be able to import a graphic from Excel dynamically, we create a new Excel data source in our data map. We define the name of the data source and our file path. Now we insert our achievement values, for example, in the form of a progress bar. To do this, we choose Select to define the target range in our already prepared Excel document. Then the Excel file can be closed again. After this, we define our data input, which we can take from our already connected SharePoint data source. We then set our results data to charts and select the worksheet in which the data is located. By confirming with OK, we have now integrated our Excel data source. Embedding in our document works as usual via Insert Data Field in the Docs42 tab. Set images as the type here. The generated document then looks like this. The data of the first record is now the output in the generated document. To display the data of all our employees in the document, the repeat area function is available. To do this, click on Automated Range in the Docs42 menu. The dialog that now opens allows you to work with conditions and repeats. Select the data source you want to repeat Click OK and close the window. Now a gray field with a red circle has been inserted. This symbol indicates a repeated area. Next to the gray field, another small gray field has been inserted. This one indicates the end of the repetition. You can move the fields as you like and thus flexibly define the start and end of the repeated area. In our example, we move the end behind our last data field thus repeating the entire table. When clicking on Generate, a document is now returned, which contains the data of all list entries. If the list expands in the future, and the document is generated again, the additional data records will of course also be inserted. If you want to load only certain list entries dynamically from SharePoint, please watch the video Generating Dynamic PowerPoint Presentations with Docs42 from SharePoint. Of course, you can also work in Docs42 with conditions to display only certain datasets. To do so, open the Automate Area dialog box again. Under Condition, you define which data you want to show or hide. In our example, we only want to display employees who have achieved more than 90% of their goals. To do this, we select our data field Achievement by means of insert data field and specify in the operator that only persons over 90% achievement of objectives should be displayed. This can be done by typing the greater than symbol followed by 0.9. You could also insert complex conditions here and work with the AND, OR and NOT operators for example. After clicking on OK, two gray fields are inserted again, this time with a question mark. 
Again, you can freely select the start and end point of the condition. We set this as we did for the repeated range of tables start and end. If you now generate the document again, only the data of the persons who have reached more than 90% of the targets will be displayed. If you want to exclusively create the document for a specific record, work with Docs42 input parameters. These offer you flexible possibilities in your data selection and support the logical structure of the document. You define input parameters in the Data Map Designer by clicking on the Input Parameters field. Three types are available. Input parameters with the type text are used, for example, if you want to add additional free text to the document. With type select from values, you can work with fixed values, for example, sales employee and marketing employee. Type selection from data source allows you to select a specific record from a data source in order to generate the document for it. We want to select a specific employee from our SharePoint list, so in our example, we work with the type selection of data sources. First, you enter the name of the input parameter and a short comment as input assistance. Then you select the corresponding data source, in our case, employee list. As value, we choose this field ID. This should be a primary key to tell Docs42 for which unique record the respective document is to be generated. As display text, we select the data field title. This contains the name of the employee. This makes it immediately recognizable for whom the document is generated, so you don't have to know any IDs by heart. Once the input parameter is created, it is available in the Explorer data field. You can insert it into the document as a data field, which is particularly interesting for the input parameter types text or selection of values. In our case, we only select the data set to be generated, so the field does not need to be inserted into the document, but the link to the data source still needs to be established. To do this, you need the Data Map Explorer again, using filters in the data source. To avoid a circular relationship of the filter of our original data source, the basis of our data and the input parameter, another data source, must be created and the input parameter must be linked to it. To do this, clone your original data source employee list, open the new clone data source and under query, set the link for input parameters and values. The ID field of this data source, which is numeric, should be equal to the ID we select in the input parameter. You can still rename your new data source and upon saving, this is now available in the data field explorer. In the last step, the existing data fields must be replaced with the, those of the new data source. Clicking on Generate now opens the dialog box for the new input parameter. Now select the desired employee and Docs42 will generate the corresponding document. With the help of the Docs42 variables, which follow the syntax angled brackets percent sign, data source dot data field percent sign angled brackets. You have many more possibilities to personalize your documents, for example, with dynamic watermarks. To do this, add a text watermark to the document with the usual word functions and select one of your data fields as the text. For example, employee, list.title, or other. When generating the document, the employee name is now also displayed as a watermark in the document. Now I will show you the option to encrypt your login data and store it in the config file. Besides the secure encryption over your data, this has the advantage that you can manage your connection data centrally and use it across data sources. To do this, we create an Excel document in which we enter the URL 
to your SharePoint page, the username and the password. By managing the URL in a config file, you can save a lot of time if you move the template from a test to a production system and the URL changes. To ensure a high level of security, we enter username and password encrypted, of course, which is done by using the Docs42 crypto data source. We create the crypto data source in the data map explorer. First, we name our data source. Then choose a master password. With this password, you can manage the crypto data source. You'll have to remember this password. Otherwise, access to the data source won't be possible anymore. Your data will be encrypted according to the encryption key. In the tab Encrypt Values, enter your username. Click on Encrypt and copy the encrypted value into your Excel config file. Please repeat the same for your password. Your values are now encrypted in the Excel file, which you must connect to the data map in the next step. To do this, click on the Excel button and select the appropriate Excel spreadsheet from the Explorer. To dynamize the path, we will work with the variable doc path. This makes it easy to move the templates or rename the folder. Now select the range for which data fields are to be added and check read until first empty cell. This automatically extends the data range if further data series are added to the Excel document. Then click on OK and a new Excel data source is created. To use the encrypted values of the crypto data source, switch back to the crypto data source. After entering the master password, you can manage them. In the fields section, create the row's username and password with appropriate names. In the column data field, select the corresponding field from the Excel connection file. After clicking on OK, the configuration is completed and the config file including the encrypted data, can be used to connect to data sources. Next, switch back to the SharePoint data source. We now exchange our manually entered connection details with the encrypted ones from the config file. To do so, click on the three dots next to Site and select the corresponding data field from the Open dialog window. First, the field for the site from the Excel data source and then the respective fields for the username and password of the crypto data source. Now click on connect and the connection to your SharePoint is established. Now you can select your SharePoint list again as usual. After clicking on OK, the new connection data is stored and you can generate your document again without further changes. These were just some of the many possible methods to create your first Docs42 documents. To learn about more examples, click on the Tutorials button in the add-in. There are sample templates and more tutorial videos available. To test Docs42 for 30 days free of charge, or to get an online demo tailored to your requirements, simply visit our website or write to us at info at docs42.com.